campsite dinette, large rear bath where I can fully stand in the shower, and a big kitchen sink all for under 3,200 pounds. Folks, this is the 2021 Forest River Ozark 1660 FQX. So with a small camper like this, it's all about utilization of space. And coming in at under 3,200 pounds with uh, right around 700 pounds or so of cargo carrying capacity, folks, this is everything you need to be able to tow with like a mid-size to a larger SUV, right? If you have an SUV that can tow 5,000 pounds, this is definitely one that you might be interested in. Uh, we'll start off here. So one of the things that I do like is the fact it comes with a campsite dinette. And I love when manufacturers are able to fit this into a floor plan because this is the site I want, right? I look out here, well, right now I just see a beautiful showroom floor, but most of the time this will be your campsite. This is where you want to look out at. Um, and you know, I, I'm able to sit here and just have breakfast, sip on a cup of coffee. It's pretty much perfect. Now, one thing with the dinette you'll notice is that, you know, I don't really have enough room for another person. So, you know, if you do have company, um, you know, just know that you, you have to snuggle pretty tight in here uh, to be able to fit two people on each side. My opinion, this is more just of a one-on-one, -on -one, which, you know, this is a couple's RV. That is kind of what it's built for, and, and I think they accomplish that well. I do like the fabric choice here what you'll notice is they inlaid a little bit of blue stitching and, and i don't know i, I personally kind of like it um it's different you know i i don't really care for when manufacturers put blue led lights in because i think it's obnoxious but i do like the stitching in here i, I think it does add just a little element a little pop of color um which you know when in today's rvs where we're getting a lot of whites and some grayages um you know i do appreciate getting a little bit of color there now, this table itself, uh, if you take a look underneath, I mean, you have the legs here, so of course you can remove the legs, but if you take a look right over there, you will see that you have an electrical outlet. So if you need to plug anything in and kind of use this as like a, um, a spot to work on a laptop, tablet, something like that, you can. And there is storage underneath the seats here too. I will remove these. You can see those are Velcroed on. If I lift this up, Boom, just like that. You can see you have storage on both sides. So not a ton, um, you know, and, and of course you have the supports going across, so not that you can fit anything large in there, but the fact you do have storage is always great and uh, you do have that on both sides. Both sides, the, the, they're both seats rather do lift up. And again, I know I mentioned this window, but one thing I do wanna mention is how big, how large that window is, folks. Uh, a lot of times, if you do have the campsite dinette, uh, you know, the window isn't near this big, so I certainly appreciate the size of it. You have USB uh, charging ports right off to the side, storage up top, and this is big storage. I'll lift this up so you can take a look. I mean, that runs the whole way across. And when you're talking about a small RV, having big storage like this is incredible. And you know, at, at first sight, you might think, well, Ian, 700 pounds of cargo carrying capacity isn't a ton. And I agree, but on a travel trailer this size, it, you really shouldn't exceed that. It really should be all you need. And, and again, you'll still stay under you know, that 4,000 pound mark. And so you'll still be able to tow it with an SUV that can tow 5,000 pounds, even if you load this thing up fully. Uh, if you want a TV, this is where it will go. You can see the connections for that. Thermostat is located here. Now, mind you, that is just for the heat. There is a roof-mounted AC, but the controls for that are located right there. So we make our way back into the bathroom. I will come right over here and sit down. So as far as space, you can see uh, for leg space, I actually have pretty good leg space, a ton of shoulder space. The bowl is plastic. This is one of the few fails I have here. And I, I know why they did it. Um, you know, I mean, one, of course, uh, price point, it's a little bit cheaper. And two, uh, weight, right? You know, a porcelain bowl is going to weigh more. Um, and even though, you know, 690 pounds, I think technically is what the carrying capacity on here is a lot for the RV. You know, if you're taking some of that up with a porcelain bowl, you know, that will be less you have. I personally would still trade off the weight for the bowl. I would probably just swap this out. Uh, but, you know, that's something uh, for you to decide whether that's important to you or not. You will see underneath the sink, you have additional storage there. Uh, access panel, is that open? No, that's still attached. Okay, let's just see if we can see what's under there. Maybe we can see on the outside. Um, you have some countertop space there with an electrical outlet, you know, kind of have this little recessed storage space. You can see right up there. Even though you don't have a medicine cabinet per se, you do have this storage, which I like. It's like a little tiny linen closet, so you can put some you know, towels and stuff in there. Or if you want to use it as a medicine cabinet, you can do that too. You have a mirror there. And one of my favorite parts about this camper, especially for the size, 
Look at this, folks. At six foot tall, I can completely stand in the shower. Now, I always say that you know I don't spend on I don't plan on spending a ton of time in here, but the fact that I can actually fully stand and not have to bend down in an RV this size is pretty rare. A lot of times you just don't get that height, uh, especially when you're at this weight. So uh, for me, that is definitely a, a huge win. I think they nailed it. If you take a look right over to here, you'll see the fridge freezer combo. This one does run off both propane and electric, has automatic switch over, thermostats right there, easy to use, cut out there too. Uh, if you need to change out any fuses or anything, that's where your fuse panel's located. And then we get over to the kitchen here. Um, you know, I'll start on top and then I'll, I'll go down. But you have storage there. Well, it, it's not even a frosted glass, it's almost like a silver reflective glass. A little interesting what they use in here. Um, eh, maybe it is frosted, just kind of looks silver when it's closed. Anyway, uh, right in there, you can see uh, decent storage, microwave right up top. Not, not a ton of storage there. Um, you know, I, I guess it's, it's a, for me, it's a little bit short on above storage, you know, places to put my, my cups, my bowls, my plates, things like that. I would have liked to have seen just a little bit more up top. Maybe they extended the counter over. Uh, I'll get to that in just a second. And then you have additional storage underneath. So. Uh, what you'll probably have to do in this camper, at least in my opinion, and you know, take it with a grain of salt because obviously you can do whatever you want, but because these storage areas are so big, you'll probably want to use some of this for your kitchen stuff because this is larger than most, but you know, this is probably smaller than a lot of them you get in this size. You'll also see window right there, USB port, electrical outlet, you have the high-rise faucet, nice big sink. I do like this. Uh, it's composite, but that's fine. You know, it doesn't scratch as easy as stainless, and because of the size, you can fit some bigger uh, residential size pots and pans down in there. Two burner cooktop over to the side. You know, again, I when you have the full-size sink, I prefer to have the full-size cooktop. I understand why you didn't because of the size of the countertop, but that brings me to my next point. I guess for me, so if we can take a look right over here, Sam, show everyone, right? So, so this is great because it is nice and open. You have a lot of space right here. But for me, I would have liked to have seen the countertop, right? Extend the countertop to right over here. And if we do that, you'll still have enough room to walk through. You know, if it's right here, you can still get through the other side of the bed. And you can extend the cupboards over or move the microwave down, giving you another door, more cupboard space up top. Uh, that would be option A, right? I think that would be, in the ideal world, I would have liked to have seen them do that. At the very least in this floor plan, give me a countertop extension right here and another electrical outlet, right? So that I have some prep space. So I can pop this up, you know, I can be cooking right here, be able to plug it in, have some additional prep space right here. It's still plenty far enough away from the bed. I don't have to worry about, um, you know, anything falling on the bed or anything like that. I guess I would have liked to have seen that. It just seems like there's a lot of open space here for me personally. Uh, let, let me know what you guys think. In the comment section, You know, would you prefer to have seen more counter space, a little bit longer countertop? Would you be happy with just a countertop extension? Or do you like having kind of the open, the open feel, right? Having it more open, make it a little bit easier to get in and out of bed. Maybe a place for a dog to sleep. If you have a dog, this might be a good area because it's out of the main walkway. You know, let me know what you, what you think in the comment section below. Uh, you'll see the drawer. You have a single drawer that, you know, you have to have at least one. They got it. So that way you have a spot for your flatware. Uh, you have the furnace right down there. Direct vent furnace is really all you need in a camper this size. Storage across the top here. I'll open this up. This again is one of these very minor things. I think a strut would have been really helpful here simply because, you know, you can see where I'm standing. Uh, it's not super easy to access. And even, you know, if I'm at the side of the bed, it's kind of a reach and it's just awkward. So I would have liked to have seen a strut just because otherwise without actually physically getting on the bed, that one's just a little tough to open. Uh, on both sides, wardrobe space, you do have space to hang clothes. You can see right on the sides here are your, uh, your nightstands with the USB ports as well as the electrical outlet there. If we take a look underneath, so this is kind of nice. Uh, this opens up and you can see that it shares the space with the pass-through, which is great, right? So that's a huge pass-through. We'll see that when we go outside and you do have a couple access points. I do like this as well, how this is just kind of notched out right here um, because you know, personally, this makes it a lot easier for me to get to. If I want to put a laundry basket under there for dirty clothes, I can. It's still kind of you know out of sight for the most part. You know, if I want to kick my shoes off, put my shoes under there, I can do that. Maybe I want some house slippers under there. Uh, I do just like the openness that they did um, 
personally, you know, for me, right over there. Uh, and again, if you want TV, as I mentioned, the TV is right over there. You still do have access from the, or not access, but a viewpoint from the bed. You can still watch TV from the dinette or the bed. So if uh, you want TV at night, you're still good to go. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2021 Ozark 1660 FQX. So one of the things you'll notice right away is the fact that this one does have the Ascent package. So what that means is you have the smooth uh, metal front right here, which is great, looks beautiful, nice and easy to clean. And then on the side, instead of being the ribbed aluminum, we have gone to fiberglass. So we'll take a look at that when we go around to the side. Right up front, 20 pound propane tank there. You'll also see uh, rails for your battery. You can see where that is located right there up front. And then you have the diamond plating up front. How to protect that front end from some of the rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. When we come around to the side, it is good to note that this one has solar prep. So if you want solar, simply buy the portable panels, plug it in right there. It's already pre-wired and it will trickle charge your battery. Now, the pass through here, as I mentioned inside, is huge. And for me, this is a split, right? They nailed it and then they kind of failed a small little thing and, and we'll take a look at what I mean. So the thing I think they nailed is the size of the opening. Look how big this door is, right? And it, when you look at that compared to the pass through, you almost get full access to this pass through, which is great. Because a lot of manufacturers will give you a door that stops like here and it's hard to get to some of these items, but not the case. Very easy to access those items. And so I love that big pass through double access from inside and outside massive doors. But where I think they kind of just missed the mark for me at least is the fact that there's no light in the pass through. Um, you know, I, I just would have liked to have some kind of LED light, even if it's a single one or a strip or something. I guess let me know in the comment section what you guys think. It, it, does it matter to you if there's an LED light or not? You know, do you think it's worth, uh, you know, the little upcharge that maybe to have one? Or do you say, you know, Ian, I never get in there at night. I just get in there at day. No big deal. Let me know. Uh, making our way back a little bit, power awning. There is an LED light strip on there. So that way you can hang out at night here. You know, touch a button, button to roll it out. Same thing to go right back in. Super simple and easy to use. You have the uh, foldable grab handle right here, which I like. It does give you more control, which is great. You also see the foldable aluminum steps on this one. So aluminum, of course, the treads won't rust. It also has some grip on there in case it, uh, you know, starts to rain or a little bit of dew or something like that in the morning. Just gives you a little bit more traction. And as I mentioned, this one with the Ascent package has the fiberglass sidewalls, which are gorgeous. Uh, they look beautiful and uh, again, easier to clean. Right here on the outside, electrical outlet, in case you need to plug anything in. There's that big window I mentioned inside. I mean, you can see, you know, again, just uh, the size of that window. And right there, this one is pre-wired for Wi-Fi as well. You have the King Connect. So if that is something that you're interested in, you certainly can have that installed. So that way you can have Wi-Fi while you are out and your travels. Outside shower on campsite. This is something that is a little more rare. A lot of times it's on the off campsite, sometimes on the back of the RV. Uh, I know people are kind of split here. I personally like it. And the reason being, right, if I need to wash the dogs or anything, you know, I can just take this guy right here, hose everything down, uh, we're good to go. Or, if, you know, or just need to wash your feet off after the beach, something like that. Uh, it is just nice and easy to, to get to. Um, one of the things I personally would have liked to have seen is if they would have had like a propane quick connect or something there, simply because you have the, you know, the outside shower here. If you just run a quick propane line, now you basically have an outside kitchen set up, you know, I mean, you're missing the fridge, but you do have the water access and then you can have your little grill or something like that. Um, you'll see the, uh, the bumper, right? Square tubular bumper with the end caps gives you a convenient spot to store your sewer hose. You also see where your spare is mounted, which is great because this does make it very easy to get to. Right up top is backup camera prep. If you want a backup camera, having the prep does make it very easy to install. And then coming around to the off door side, cable and satellite inlet there. Termination right down below, you will see both your black and gray tank valves, 30 amp power cord. You can just pull it out, plug it in. That does power everything in the RV, including your microwave, your TV, as well as the AC. Black tank flush here, which really simplifies washing out your black tank. And I do recommend doing that every time you are done camping. And essentially what that is, is instead of having to stick a toilet down your, or stick a hose down your toilet to wash out your black tank, you hook it up right here. The sprayers are built in the black tank and they will wash it out for you. So that way paper and other solids will uh, get cleaned off so your sensors aren't giving you false readings. City water inlets located a little bit further up and then fresh tank fill is located right there. So if you have city water, pretty obvious. If not, you wanna make sure to fill the fresh water tank, which I believe on this one is uh, 38 gallons. And then you will have a 30 gallon gray as well as a 30 gallon black tank. 
All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is the 2021 Forest River Ozark Ascent 1660 FQX. If you're interested in this lightweight travel trailer and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also in the comments section, let me know what you think they nailed, what they failed, or if you were designing this RV, what you'd change. Thanks again for watching, folks. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.